as I always tell my class, there's someone more, much more famous than me in New Orleans, uh, doc, another Dr. John. Uh, uh, but it, it took me exactly 20 minutes to get here, which is wonderful. Uh, so it's a privilege to be able to come and talk to you folks. Um, I, I, I really love coming out the side. I have a wonderful collaboration with Nunes Community College. Um, they've been very kind to us. Um, they, uh, they have this process technology operators training curriculum uh, where they train people to work in the petrochemical industry and they have this virtually a refinery that's outside um, on skid mounts and they, they get our students to come and turn the valves and the knobs and really operate a refinery. It's amazing. Uh, so I go there once a year with, with the students. It's a great experience. Um, in any case, um, I want to talk to you folks about uh, um, why do dispersants work um, um, and, and try to, try to, to, to convey a, a little basic knowledge of how these things work and where it can be improved, okay? All dispersants are made up of these things called surfactants in a, in a, in a solvent, okay? Um, and the surfactant is it's basically another word for soap. It has a, a, a head group which, which likes water, a tail which is more like oil and likes, likes oil. And uh, the manifestations of molecules like this are all, we see it around us, uh, cells, membranes are made of these, these surfactants which are called lipids in the biological world. The, they're used in soaps, detergents, all the way uh, across. But a little bit of a background, here's the Deepwater Horizon incident. Um, and, and as you know, the statistics, uh, what, is, what is really remarkable is, is how much dispersants were used, okay? Um, is, is how much dispersants were used in the Deepwater Horizon incident. Um, and uh, when the incident happened, there were different techniques used to um, contain the oil and to remove the oil. They used uh, booms and berms and control burns and skimmers. It's kind of interesting that uh, dispersants had a lot of uh, use in the Deepwater Horizon incident. And this slide basically tells us that uh, dispersants can be, can be sprayed from boats, can be sprayed from, from planes. Uh, and this was the first, first time dispersants were used in a deep sea environment where they were actually injected at the, at the site of the discharge, okay? All right, this is a, um, a very nice slide from ExxonMobil. Um, a couple of uh, spill scientists from ExxonMobil, Dr. Thomas Kulbaugh and Dr. Tim Nedward have been instrumental in educating academics and, and, and industry in, in how dispersants work and so on. And they were kind enough to, to, to uh, allow me to use some of these, these slides. Um, so if you look at, at this, this is a very good uh, slide that tells you, uh, depending on the height of the wave, so the energy that the wave has, and the thickness of the oil, there are different areas where you can use different, lev different kinds of, of recovery, okay? So what's interesting here is that the dispersants, the little green droplets, uh, cover almost the entire spectrum. There are, if the oil is thick enough and there's not enough wave action, you can burn the oil, okay? And mechanical recovery is, is, is virtually very, very difficult. And I'll show you that this by this slide of the Deepwater Horizon, um, a, a satellite view. Uh, and you can see that uh, when there's a skimmer going through the, the, the oil slick, it hardly makes a dent. It's like taking a, 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 doing a scratch across the surface. Okay, so uh, all the world's skimmers can never pick up, pick up a uh, sufficient amount of oil, the kind of uh, the oil that was released in the Deepwater Horizon. So you need something else, and this is why you need dispersants. And here's the basic concept of dispersants. 
why do dispersants work? What is the key thing to get dispersants? What's a key factor? Um, and Mace was wonderful to, to, to uh, bring up the topic. That's, forgive me for putting an equation, but it's important, okay? Uh, there, is, there is this simple equation that you can think about, all right? Um, when you, this dW is one term. It's the energy, it's the waves crashing on the, on, on, on the oil spill, okay? This thing is called a surface tension or an interfacial tension, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what this means, and this is, this dA is the area, okay? Mm -hmm. So the waves have a fixed amount of energy, so let's, let's pretend this is 16 units, whatever that is. The 16 can be made up of four for, the, for this, this gamma and four for the dA, all right? Now, supposing you drop the, the gamma to two, to get that 16, you have to make the dA eight, okay? So when the gamma goes down, the dA goes up. So in other words, what this equation is telling you is that for a given amount of energy, if you keep dropping the surface tension small, lower and lower, you create more and more area. In other words, you create more and more tiny little droplets which have a lot, lot more little balls. Okay, from, from a flat oil slick, you can create a lot of little balls if you drop that interfacial tension down. What do you mean by the interfacial tension? This is, this is a, a picture of this, it's the, this insect called a water strider. It's, it can walk on water, basically, all right? And that's because the molecules of water, inside the water, they, they're very comfortable, but on the surface, they're kind of stuck together, and they, they form this, this kind of a, 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 almost like a molecular layer, okay? And that's what, it's, it's like making the surface a little rigid. And so you, if you lower that rigidity by putting soaps in there, you open it up, and then you can, you can, you can ch change things around, all right? And so that's the basic concept again. Here you have a slick that's on water, okay? You have wave action. And the, wave is, uh, and the waves have a certain energy. So if you drop this interfacial, now you say interfacial tension between oil and water. If you drop this interfacial tension down, you'll break with, with the soap molecules, you'll break up the oil into little droplets. Okay, that's the basic concept. And this, this is the master equation that, that gives you an understanding of what is, what is needed. All right. Um, this is how you measure this, this interfacial tension. You can see that what we do is we put a little oil droplet in water inside a, a capillary and we spin it. Uh, this is the velocity, the angular velocity at which you spin it. And you can see that if the, as you spin it, this drop elongates. Okay, it elongates all the way, and this, so it has the cylinder, the, which is the drop, has a radius. And, and the l smaller the radius, the smaller the interfacial tension. So that's just a way you measure it, okay? All right, and here's the thing. You have to go, this is without any addition of, of a dispersant, core exit. It's something like 40 million newtons per meter, and then when you add the core exit, you see how much you've dropped the interfacial tension from, from something like 40 to something like 10 to the minus 2. So you've dropped that gamma so much that dA, the area, increases again three orders of magnitude. So you've broken up a flat slick into tiny little droplets, okay? That's the basic concept. Okay, so in, in core exit, you have, you have all these, these, these molecules. Um, no one really knows why. Well, there are theories uh, of, of why do you have this particular concoction. Uh, that, that's, uh, uh, NALCO gives you the, 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 the components but doesn't tell you wha what each one did. There's a, a brilliant scientist called Jerry Canaveri at uh, Exxon who first invented these, these dispersants. He just passed away last year at the, at the age of 85 or something like that. He was, he was brilliant in, in designing these, these, these kind of materials and, and uh, finding out why it works and, and, 
and making it work for, for as, as good dispersants. All right, this is, this is an interesting uh, uh, picture that you folks have probably have seen. This is prior to injection, satellite view. You could see the oil, oil slick. Uh, this is the Deepwater Horizon. As you, as you inject, after three hours of injection of Corexit at the site of discharge, you see that a lot of the, uh, this, is, this is where the, the, the Deepwater Horizon, the rig stands. You could see that a lot of the shade has gone away. Uh, 11 hours of injection, much of it has gone away. Um, and then you start seeing that after you stopped injection, uh, you, 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 the, the slick comes back. Okay, 28 hours after injection uh, in, in ended, uh, some of the slick comes back. So this was a clear test that, that adding the dispersant took the oil that was coming out of the deep sea spill, broke it up into droplets, it created a plume, but you did not form the surface slick anymore. A, a little concept that is very relevant to, to dispersants. It's not really the use of, it's the same kind of molecules. You're using these soaps or surfactants, but it's used in a different context. You put a little paper boat, and then you come behind it, and you put, uh, um, you put a little drop of soap right behind it and you will be able to propel the boat. Okay, here's another one. So here's the oil that's spilling and I'm coming around and I'm going to put soap all around the, uh, the, the edge and you can see what happens to that oil. That oil starts coming together. It's the same phenomenon. The oil starts coming together to form a thick mass. Okay, in the oil field industry, this is called herding the oil. Okay, so let's pretend you don't have any waves to break it up to form, to, to form these little droplets and so on. This is actually where they test this thing out uh, at OMSET, um, which, is, which I, I believe is a Coast Guard facility, is it? It's a BSEE facility in, in, in New Jersey. Um, but they have a wave tank here, and they're trying to show that when you have uh, conditions like an oil spill in Alaska in, in, uh, in, in with, with ice flows all around, you cannot apply dispersant. You can't break up the oil. So what you do is you, you apply this, this, this soap, which is really the same molecules that are used in dispersants, to the edge, and you take that oil and you bring it all together into a thick mass, and if the thickness of the oil is greater than three millimeters, you can burn it, okay? It's got, of course, it's got to be uh, completely approved. Uh, it's got to be far enough from, from show lines and so on and so forth, and this is an example of a, of, of a burn. That's the basic concept of dispersants. They're made up of these, these molecules that have a head that likes water, a tail that likes oil, you break it up into little droplets with dispersants because of lowering this interfacial tension. And so under certain conditions, you can use this herding concept, which is again, a, it's all based on interfacial tensions. You create gradients in interfacial tensions that actually leads to flows at the, at the interface and everything, it pushes the oil together, okay? Incidentally, you have, when you do this herding, you have 15 minutes, uh, uh, a window of about 15 minutes be before you can, you, can, you can light it because the, uh, if you don't do that, it spreads all over again, okay? Um, so that's important. So uh, continuing research, um, one of the problems with, with these dispersants is it has, it has solvents in them. Okay, because some soaps are soluble in water, some soaps are not soluble in water. Some of these things that I show the chemical structures of. Okay, so can you minimize the solvents? Can you target it? A lot of dispersants get wasted by just because you don't you miss the oil uh, and you may put it into the water and it just goes into the water and becomes wasted. Okay, can you? Uh, how applicable are they to deep sea operations? Operations the Arctic and so on. Okay, so some of the things that we are doing are based on new concepts. Um, uh, one of the problems we realize is that the world's coastlines are stockpiled with core exit. It's going to be very difficult to displace them. 
but uh, uh, this is long-term research and we are hoping that some of the things we do can act in synergy with Corexit and so on. Okay, so there are new concepts, new materials that act with, 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 with uh, existing dispersants. Uh, there are polymers, there are gels. For example, you take your laundry detergent, you can get it in liquid form, you can get it in granulated powders, or you can get it in these pods, right? That's the latest concept, getting them in pods that you can put in there. If we can develop dispersants as pods, well, like gel-like dispersants, when you throw them on, 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 on water, they'll float for a while till they contact oil, so they won't sink into the water column. Okay, and you're minimizing the solvent too. So we're working with some of these, these formulations. Smart delivery, making things stick to the oil. And we're using these very natural clays, to, uh, which are, so these are clays. Clays are flat sheets, very environmentally benign, like sand. Okay, but there are these unique clays called halicite that are like scrolls of paper. They roll up into scrolls. And inside them, there's a tube, there's a little tube. Okay, they, are, they have these voids. So you can put your, your surfactant molecules inside them and they will stick to the oil. Okay, so it's like drug delivery. You're sending drugs that'll, that'll go specifically to cancer cells. So these clays will stick to the oil water interface. They will release the dispersant and then, and, and it'll be very, very meaningful. So those are some of the things we're working on. Um, understanding dispersants at the molecular level, new tools, and of course you've got to go from the lab to the field. Okay, so thank you very, very much again for uh, the opportunity to talk to, to you about dispersants and about, about our work. Thank you.